A few years ago, my work required me to drive thousands of miles each month. Now, thankfully, I don't have to do that anymore, but when I do drive, I notice that there are more and more distracted drivers out on the road. And it's so important to have a recording of your side of the story. And that's where the Garmin Dashcam Mini 2 comes in. Today's video is sponsored by Best Buy, and we're gonna check out all the powerful things that this little device can do. Let's start by checking out what's inside the box. All right, so in here we have the dash cam mini two right there. Now they say it's smaller than your car key. And uh, yeah, they're right, there's my car key. And you can see just how compact this is. Now this does have a 1080p camera of 140 degree viewing angle. So we'll check out more about that. And in the box, it comes with some instructions, a dual outlet USB power supply. And here it comes with a four foot cable as well as a 13 foot cable, as well as a second mount. So here on the dash cam itself, you have a button there that you can simply save items with. There you have a mount included, so you can simply remove the sticky and place it anywhere on your windshield. And then here you have the camera. And then on the side here, you do have a micro SD card slot with a voice recording button that you can turn on and off. Now, one unique thing about this is it allows you to have the cord plugged in either way. So you can have it plugged in coming from the top of the device, or you can have it come in from the bottom. So making it very easy to hide these cables as they will always need to be plugged in to power this device. So now we're gonna go ahead and download the Garmin Drive app to get this set up. And we will first need to agree to the terms and conditions. And then here we're going to select our dash cam. Here we have the Garmin dash cam series. You want to allow for permissions to access photos and videos. And then we're going to plug in the dash cam. So here, this is the four foot cable that connects to the bottom. And then here we need to hold down the save button until the button flashes blue. There we go. And we're going to pair over Bluetooth and pair again. And here we're going to create an account or sign in. Okay, so here it says your dash cam records personal data, including video and audio if available. So the vault is Garmin's online cloud, or you do have the micro SD card option here that you can just access it from there. So here we're going to activate vault and then is going to connect this directly to your Wi-Fi. So as long as it has power and Wi-Fi, you can view the camera as well as it can upload. Now for you to be able to access it anytime, your car does need to have constant power. We'll find out more about that in a bit. So here I'm going to select my Wi-Fi network and type in the password. All right, it is now connected to Wi-Fi. And now it is saying that we do need to connect a micro SD card. It does need to have eight gigabytes of storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug one in now. Okay, here I found my 128 gig micro SD card. So now I'm just going to place it in with the camera up until it locks in. Just a little click there. And now it is saying the memory card must be formatted first for this device. Formatting deletes all information on the card. So if you did have any information on this, make sure you remove that before you put the SD card in here. And we're going to format now. Okay, the format is complete and we are done. So it turns blue when it's ready to go. So as soon as we have the micro SD card in and we have powered the device, the Garmin Dashcam Mini 2 begins recording. So here you can see the red light. That indicates that it is currently recording and it will continuously record until it loses that power. Let's go ahead and head out to the car and get this installed. First, let's plug the Mini 2 into the power adapter here. And then you're gonna find the power outlet and plug that in. And it shouldn't show up any lights unless your car is powered on. And now with this four foot cable, let's go ahead and attach it to the windshield. Now to make sure this is going in the proper spot, I'm going to turn on the car. Once the red light's on, let's go into the drive app and here we can tap live view. And I'm thinking I'm gonna have it a little bit higher right behind the rear view mirror here. So you know, you could have it one side or the other, but I think right here is going to be the perfect spot. So now all we need to do is peel off the sticky tab here, place it in the center there. I like to hold for 30 seconds. 
And now let's position the camera. I think right there works great. And so here with the four foot cable, that is going to come down and it is going to be in view. So let's go ahead and put the other cable in and see if we can hide it and so that you're not seeing it while you're driving. And then this cable sticks up and now it's nicely out of the way. And here I'm using some bike tire changing tools to hide the cable in the crevices of the vehicle. And now the Garmin Dash Cam Mini 2 is fully installed. That actually was so simple to do and I'm very impressed with how I was able to hide the cables and it only took a little bit of time. So now let's go ahead and hit the road and try out some of these features. So when I turn on the car, the Mini 2 will automatically power on. You'll first see a green light and then red indicating that it has begun recording. Let's get on the road. Over here on the left side, we have the mute microphone button. So if you don't want it to record audio, you can press that. And then if we press it again, it will begin to record audio. And then here on the front, we have the save video button. So when we press that, it will record the last 10 seconds and the next 20 seconds and save that. So if I push that right now, it will begin to record audio. And then here on the front, we have the save video button. So when we press that, it will record the last 10 seconds and the next 20 seconds and save that. So if I push that, it has saved the last 10 seconds and it's flashing a little bit here to show that it's currently saving the next about 20 seconds. So it will record a 30 second clip that you can then download and easily share. So that is how you can operate. Now let's go ahead and try some voice commands. So if you're driving and you wanna take a picture, you can say, okay, Garmin, take photo. And there it took a photo and saved it to the account. You can also say, okay, Garmin, save video. And there it has saved that video, just like pressing the button, but doing it completely hands-free. If I want to turn off the recording of the audio, I can do that as well. Okay, Garmin, stop audio. And there you can see how quick it is to respond to my voice. Okay, Garmin, record audio. And now we are on our way. So as long as we have the settings set to continuously record, it will continue to record everything that it sees. And when you get back into the app and connect it to Wi-Fi, you can save those recordings. I've saved up to 27 minutes. It takes a few minutes to download, no problem. Now that I'm home, if I want the footage to upload to the vault or connect to my phone and download it, I would need to keep the car powered on so that it can then turn on or I have the option where I can connect it to the computer. And to remove this, you can simply pull off just a little force and it disconnects. Now, once you're ready to view your saved videos and other recordings from your Mini 2, there are a few different ways in which you can do this. One is you can actually just take the camera off and you can plug it directly into your computer and it will pop up as a drive and you can see all of those different files. You can also just take out the micro SD card and plug that into your computer to see all those files as well. The sticky tab here. And then the third option is where you can use the Garmin Drive app to see all of the different videos and download those and then have them automatically upload to the cloud there. So here we're going to do that part now. So I'm going to head into the Drive app and here we're going to plug in our camera and just wait till it turns on and connects to Wi-Fi. And then here we're going to go to the video and photos. So here we have a few different sections. Up at the top here we have saved. So every time you asked it to take a picture or save video, that is where all of these are. So these are just going to be those little clips that you asked it to save. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a temporary folder. So these are all the things that it was recording every time you started your vehicle and it began recording until it turned off. So you can see some of these are just a minute or two, other ones are about 30 minutes long. So you have all of the full history. So it's going to save these until the camera runs out of space, then it will start overriding these. So if you wanna record that full drive that you just did, you could come in here and do this. 
But up here at the top, when we have just the little clips, those don't take very long at all. Now up here, you also have an arrow pointing down. This allows you to organize by date. So if you're looking for something on a specific date, you can come in here and change what date you want it to. So if you're only looking for one day, you could go in and choose the day you want, and then it will only show videos from that day. And then you also have the settings up here where you can choose photos, videos saved, incident videos, and parked videos. So let's see, were there any incident videos? There was one, probably just me moving the car around. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so it looks like when I was installing it and here you have the option to trim the video. So you can simply trim it the front and the back and then hit export and you have the option to include audio there. And when you press export, it will then save it to your phone's library. So let's go back in and choose one that we just saw. So here it's showing the video and I wanna save this full clip. So I'm just going to tap export. If you wanted to shorten it, you could do that as well, but we're gonna hit export and then we're going to hit save. Now I hit save to phone and I could also remove it from the camera once I have watched the clip. And here we can do the same thing with a photo. So I'm going to hit save and it's very easy to access all of those different files that you have. Now, when this is plugged in and it's connected to Wi-Fi, it's automatically going to upload those different video files to the vault. Now here I received a notification that a new vault video is available. Now the vault allows you to store your videos in the cloud for 24 hours, and then you can share it very easily. But if you want them to be stored longer than that, you would need to pay for the subscription, which can be up to 30 days. So I think it's really cool that you get those 24 hours for free um, when you automatically have them uploaded to the vault. Now let's go ahead and check out what these look like. So we're gonna head into the gallery. And so here you can see how smooth the camera is. Now on the actual video, you do have this little pop-up here that shows the date as well as the time. And then you can view the camera. And then here we can up the volume and you can hear whatever was happening if you did have the volume recorded there on the actual video. But I love how I can quickly scroll through this. This is one of those full temporary files that I have downloaded for that full drive, which is nice to be able to have all of that data. And when you scroll through, it's really fun to kind of just watch the clouds move or whatever else is happening. Um, so really, really great quality of that 1080p quality here. So let's go ahead and then scroll to another video here. So this is one of the clips that we downloaded just barely. And this is the clip that we saw today. So there was this guy right here that had a, uh, let's see, let's see if you can see what I saw. His bumper was uh, about to fall off there. So it was really cool that I had the camera in case something happens. And then I was able to quickly save that video to show you. So I think it's really fun that I have access to do that by voice so quick and easy. So kind of a fun little video to have saved there. Now let's go ahead and check out what a video looks like at night. And here you can see it's pretty dark, but my headlights are able to light up everything I need. So in case anything happens, I would be able to see that. So it actually looks really good at night as well. And here is another clip. Again, the headlights light up just as much as you need to. Not too much overexposure from other lights coming my way, but overall a very clear picture. So I'm very impressed by the quality of the camera that we have here. So if we dive further into the settings, we can go into the settings and then we can tap on the Mini 2 and this gives us a lot more details. So here we can turn on or off the data overlay. We have exposure, we have incident detection. So you can change the sensitivity, high, medium, low, or off. Here we have resolution. You can set it to 720p or the camera is 1080p, 30 frames per second with HDR compatible. So we're going to keep that all on. And then here, unsaved videos, it's going to delete those when the SD card is completely full. So it will just keep recording and then over saving them when it's full. But if you use the save button, it will then save that specific video so it won't ever be deleted even when it is full. Here we can adjust the Wi-Fi connection, the vault storage, and here you can choose a plan for your vault storage. Now, if you would like to use that vault to automatically back up your data, it is a subscription service that is gonna cost you about $4.99 per month. So you can just go into the app and sign up here.
So here there is a setting for parking guard. So parking guard monitors your parked vehicle and alerts you if an impact is detected while it is connected to power. So you can turn that on. You can have it automatically start if the car is sitting still for three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. You can change the impact sensitivity from low sensitivity to medium to high. And then you can have monitoring time. So it's going to do this for um, always on two hours, four hours, all the way up to 24 hours. And you can record before incident. So you can select this where it's automatically going to um, save 15 seconds before the incident occurred. So that's kind of a cool feature to have there. We'll keep it off for now. And then down here, you have a few other things. You can adjust the alert volume, the language, the unit times, as well as the voice commands. So here, voice commands are currently on and they are set to English. And then here we have the wake word. So you could change it from OK Garmin to OK Dash Cam. Oh, look, it hurt us. Save video. And then here you have a few more settings as well. Now I'm just so impressed with that camera quality during the day and night, it is really nice to have. I love how I can quickly save a video with the press of a button or by voice, the voice detection works so great. It's very responsive. And I also love how the app is so simple to use and how you have the options where you can have it record everything, or maybe you just wanna have it recording in case something happens, and then it can automatically delete every three minutes or whenever you turn off the camera. So you can adjust that in the settings. Now there is one feature I wasn't able to test because I don't have continuous power in my vehicle. I'm not sure many cars have that, but if you are interested in having this still record while you're parked and your car is off, you can pick up a simple power pack and then just plug the camera into there. And then when you park, it will then power up and you will be able to have those recordings and that parking detection will all work while you are in the store shopping or at work or wherever you are. So for some extra protection, you may wanna pick up one of these um, so that you can have it powered even when you are away from the car. So overall, super impressed. I loved how simple it was to install and how user-friendly this device is. You can shop now for the Garmin Dashcam Mini 2 in the link in the description below. And if you have any further questions, let me know down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.